last lecture. Hello, and welcome to my last lecture. My name is Andrew Flynn. I'm currently 85 years old, and I was in the class of 2025 at Brophy. I was born on October 1st, 2006, and I am from Phoenix, Arizona. When I was just 13 years old, COVID-19 hit. It was the end of my seventh grade year, and all of a sudden, I was sent home and had to use this website called Zoom to attend my classes. It was a hard time in my life because I didn't have the community to support my growth and relationship with God. I was all on my own. I did spend a lot of time with my family, though, because we were stuck together in our house, doing what seemed like nothing at the time. But looking back, it seems like we got a lot closer over COVID. During this time, I had two options. Listen and continue to work hard, even though being online was difficult, or not. Do my work and let my grades slip. I decided that I would work hard, not to let my grades slip, because I knew there would be consequences if I didn't. Without my family... COVID would have been hard because my parents continued supporting me even when we were stuck inside our house 24 hours a day. Looking back, I'm sad that I didn't have the rest of my seventh grade year with my friends and teachers, but I made memories with my family I won't forget. So it was kind of a good thing. So I challenge each and every one of you that is watching this video to surround yourself with good people because the people you surround yourself with will either push you to where you want to go or they will drag you down and hold you back. So make the right choice. Lastly, some people aren't made to go as far as you're going to go. You are a rocket ship going up into the sky, and some people are just the boosters that lift you up for a while, but they fall off. Don't hold on. Let them go and keep climbing. When I turned 18, I finally had to decide what I wanted to do when I grew up. I wanted to be a pediatrician so that I, I could help kids each day get better. This was especially important because healing of mind and body and spirit is important to my faith. And that is why I wanted to help kids do the same. So I went to the University of Arizona for my undergrad and then decided to go to Vanderbilt University for medical school. I graduated from medical school at the prime age of 27 years old. As soon as I finished medical school, I joined the practice of three other, three other doctors, one of them being the pediatrician I had as a kid. I was so happy with my life at this point because I had my dream job helping kids and their parents feel great about themselves and the people around them were just amazing. One day though, I encountered something really weird. A patient of mine hadn't been feeling well, and I kept thinking about them. I kept thinking and praying to God, what is wrong with this poor child? They are so young, but why are they so sick? Eventually, I figured, this, figured out this kid had a rare mutation on their liver, and they were slowly losing function in their liver. I told the family they had to go to the hospital right away as soon as they realized what was going on. Luckily, I knew someone from medical school who became a surgeon, and she got them in right away and the kid lived. I was so happy when the kid returned for their next appointment, and they were all better. It was the case of a lifetime for me, and, when I, and I will never forget how that family was so grateful to me for saving their child. If I, had no, if I had one piece of advice for you watching here right now, I would tell you to follow your heart and listen to God, because he will always be there for you in your mind, body, and spirit. Do what your heart desires, and always remember that we are all brothers and sisters in Christ, and we must help each other through our troubles. Lastly, I'll talk to you about how I have a vocation of always being for others. Since I was 15 years old, I have been working with this nonprofit organization called Swift Youth Foundation. It is an amazing organization that works with kids that are in the foster care system, that are less fortunate, or just completely homeless. It is an amazing organization that puts on after-school programs, Saturday programs, or our annual Swift Carnival, and also two sessions at Camp Swift. As a teenager, I found it very important to help others and shape myself into a better person. I wanted to be a role model for these kids because I knew they had a hard time when they were not at Swift. So I always gave it 212 degrees, like my old advisor, Coach Heidemann, always told me to do. Once I graduated high school, I kept helping with Swift, coming home from college just to go to Camp Swift in the summer, and always doing my best to show up as many events as possible. I didn't realize how much of an impact Swift had on my life until I didn't do community service for a while. I was really busy in college, balancing school and work. One day, my mom pointed out to me how much I had to change from, be from before I was going to Swift until now. And she told me that I shouldn't stop going to Swift. She also said that there should no be no excuse great enough to stop yourself from doing the right thing. So I got back involved and did my best to show up on a consistent basis. And for a while, I didn't realize the impact on going back had on me. But looking back, Swift changed me, just like it does for so many kids, teenagers, and adults. Eventually, when I started to practice with the other doctors, I made it my mission to be primary pediatrician for all the Swift kids because most of, most of those kids didn't have the money for doctors, even the bare necessities. 
Through this, I became the leading don donor for Swift every year around Giving Tuesday. I would get a phone call from teenager, just like what I had done when I was at Swift, asking, hey, Dr. Flynn, my name is Tegan. Would you like to make a donation to Swift for Giving Tuesday? You can write it off as a deductible for your tax, cre tax credit. I would always ask the same question. I would always ask the same question to the kid every year. What's your goal? How much money are you guys trying to raise? Every year, I would tell the person, however much you raise, I will double it so that all the Swift kids can have so much fun. One year, it kind of bit me in the butt, though. A little, a little, when they managed to raise $40,000, but it went to a good cause, and it was worth, it was all worth it. So I had one piece of advice that you could take from this whole presentation to help others is to help others and put them put others before yourself. It may seem really hard to ask, but give it a try. Go into a community with less than you and see how much they don't have and how much they need and help them. Thank you for watching. Go live life to the fullest.